Hello, my name's Mary Jane Flanagan. I'm the owner and founder of MJ Inspire and we help individuals and organisations become even more successful. Welcome to How to Become a Networking Ninja. This is lesson four in the Job Seekers Toolkit. This is a free online learning programme on my website where you can download resources and checklists and prepare yourself with the skills and the confidence to re-enter the job market. Now connected with this are a series of videos called Three Questions in Three Minutes where I interview industry heavyweights, HR directors and ask for CV tips, networking tips and career advice. So please go into my YouTube channel and take a look at them. Don't forget to subscribe and comment and then tell me who you'd like to hear from because if I can get them, I will. So go grab a cold drink and a pen and a piece of paper and we'll get started. So networking, funny one, isn't it? I don't know very many people that like it. Um, I know I've struggled with it over the years but I also know that it's brought me a lot of success. Now, back in the day, you used to think of it as standing in a room with a gl warm glass of white wine with complete strangers, everybody looking over each other's shoulder for the next more interesting person to walk in. Well, that sounds really scary, but actually all networking is, is making connections, is getting to know people. And in today's market, you don't even need the warm glass of wine anymore because you can do it virtually and pour yourself a cold beer out the fridge. What I would say though is the people that are most successful at networking are both interesting and interested. So they don't just sell themselves. They learn about other people. They ask them questions. Down Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is a fantastic fantastic book about networking and you can pick that up on my website I've got it listed for you to buy and I've also got it on the resource guide and I'll put it in the description below but essentially networking is made up of four elements first one is knowing yourself who you are and the image that you want to portray what are you good at what's your unique selling point USP I call it brand you and then you would build a pitch based on that. But then you've got to make sure people know those things about you. So you've got to get out there and show the world how amazing you are. And there's got to be consistency in that. Also, there is a science to networking. So it's also researching the people and the companies that you want to network with and the events that are open to you so you can make those connections. And then lastly and most importantly, it's then to build on those connections so that you build a reputation because that's what's really important. And yes, you know, be brave. Now, if you watched my Adopting a Positive Mindset, I told you about lessons from Mel Robbins in her five second rule. You know, if you're scared to go and network, if you're scared to go and ask somebody to connect, count down from five and just do it. And if you watch that session, you'll know why I've said this. So let's start at the beginning, knowing yourself. So this is about saying, what are my strengths? Now you may be reeling at the moment because you've been made redundant. And so often when things like that happens, our confidence takes a huge knock and we can forget what strengths we have. So just remember what they are, write them sound somewhere, remind yourself of them. Next, just think about what you're not so good at, because this may be a great opportunity to build those skills. So maybe you could find a mentor. At the moment, there are people willing to do a lot of things from people that have been made redundant, that maybe has those skills and that they can teach you. Do you know mentoring is a brilliant form of networking? But think about what makes you special. And then think about how people are going to know that. Now, the idea is that they should see it across your social media, that they should feel it when they meet you, that there is a consistency that sort of is this thread that runs through every connection with you. 
you want to craft an elevator pitch i'm going to show you how to do that because it would also be your um introduction in your linkedin but of course if you haven't formed your cv written your cv and your cover letter and you go networking and people say actually great can you send me a cv and you haven't got one you'll end up putting one together really quickly and probably make mistakes so make sure you have your cv up and ready to go if you watch the how to build a brilliant cv lesson i'll show you how to do it but think about what makes you brilliant. And if you don't know, ask people. This is where I'm going to request that you start pulling in favours, you start calling friends, previous employers saying, will you help me? I need to sort of put together what my strengths are. What do you think they are? Now, once you've done that, it's then about getting out there and doing it and telling the world. Now, we know that 98% of prospective employers will Google you, will look for your social media. Well, you only want them to see what you want them to see. So I suggest what you want to keep private, make sure your privacy settings are in place. And if you go to Mashable.com, they usually tell you what you need to do to get your privacy settings in place for something like Facebook. Um, less is more. So, you know, at the moment, quality over quantity. But also be mindful of what you are posting. If you have a very political stance on something, and I understand why you would do that, be aware that people may not have the same opinions as you. And therefore, um, that may impede them potentially asking you if you want to join their company. Yeah, there's the argument that you wouldn't want to join it anyway. But just if I were you, just be a little bit balanced. Um, if you really don't want to do the whole social media thing, and I get that completely, then at least set up a LinkedIn profile. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But what I would say is never post anything you wouldn't want a prospective employer to see. So what I'm going to suggest you do is you audit yourself. Google audit yourself. So I did this yesterday. So I put my name in and searched all on Google. And as you can see, every post that's up there, I am really happy with because I've made sure that that's all people see. You will never find my Facebook on Google. You will find my business Facebook, but not my personal. Now I then clicked images because people forget to do that. And then you find there's some inappropriate image of you that you probably wouldn't want the world to see. So there's a lot of people called Mary Jane Flanagan, by the way, a lot in America. But where I've circled, every single one of those images are mine. They're images that I have posted, either through blogs or tweets or LinkedIn. That first one's LinkedIn. There's quite a lot of blogs there, my business Facebook. So I have controlled what is seen about me on social media. And one of the things I've done to do that is to make sure I only post things that promote myself or the business. So do that. If you see something that you're concerned about, either remove it if it's on one of your own platforms, check your privacy settings to hide it. If it's on somebody else's, ask them to remove it. Now, as you can see, I've brought up my LinkedIn page. So there's a couple of things with this. Number one, have a really good profile photo. You want something that's smart, but also shows your personality. Don't pay for expensive ones. I took that with my iPhone and then just changed the um, tone a little bit with some software on my iPhone. You can use Color Story or the photo editing app. Not a lot. I'm not saying you suddenly make yourself a different person, but the color helps to make it pop. Next, you might want to include a background image and you can change this really easily. If you double click there, it will bring up and you can change it. Now, this photo actually came from uh, Unsplash, which is a free photo sharing site. I downloaded it to my computer and then it will pick it up from there. Next, your name. But also, if you do have any association memberships or qualifications, this is where you would put them. So this is my psychology qualification and I'm a fellow of the Institute of Training and Occupational Learning. So we've put that there. Next, you have 150 letters here. 
Now what you can do is change that. These pens help you change things. So you want to use every 150 letter. Don't just put restaurant supervisor. And actually don't state looking for work because there's another way of you doing that and you can keep a really good intro. Again, action, achievement and um, influence. You, you, you want to make sure that they see just how brilliant you are. So we're going to save that. Next, I just said to you that if you want to, you can add a banner to say you're open to work. Well, that's this. If you click on this, you can add your job title and you can actually add these. Immediately I can start, you can say what you want to do, um, choose who sees it. So you could say, I want it open to everybody and it adds the open to work photo frame for you. I, I, I'll do it for you so that you can see it. Okay, so let's just add title. Uh, job. Coach. Uh, uh, coach. Okay. All right, so I've just done that. Immediately when I'm actively applying, I want to add that, add to profile. Now what's actually gonna happen is um, update profile visibility, make your profile photo visible for all. And you can you see, um, there that it's now got that. Now I'm actually not going to um, because um, I'm actually working so I don't need it. So I'm just going to take all of these back out again and um, there you go. I'm no longer open and delete it. Okay, right. But can you see how you can add that? So don't put it there. Use that for something fabulous. This about section is 250 letters. So again, what you want to do is be clever, be savvy, and think about your elevator pitch, your elevator statement. That's where you could add that and press save. So you're slowly building up. Now, if you want to add to sections, you just go down here. So supposing you wanted to add to accomplishments you could click on any of these. So for example, if you click on courses, you can add course name. So disk profiler with disk GB, for example. Um, what's it associated with? It's associated with that. And you can check your spelling and save. There you go. So I've just added another achievement and qualification. So you can go all the way down and you can build it using these pens if you've already got the sections there or by going up to this top section here and putting it there. But a couple of other things I want to show you that can really help you. Number one, okay, skills and endorsements. Now what you want to do is have people endorse you. So if I click show more, you're going to see all these people have endorsed me for all these wonderful, glorious things. Now, if you don't have anything there, if you take the skills quiz, it will add some for you. Or you can add one. I think you can have about 30. And again, you can change it here. Actually, look, training. Yeah, add about 30. Now, also, you can have recommendations and you can ask for recommendations. Now, you'll notice I haven't flooded my website with these. It's quality over quantity but what I would recommend is over the coming months try and aim to ask somebody to add a recommendation for you um, about once every couple of weeks so that you can start to build a portfolio these are references how brilliant start with friends ex-employers people that um, are influential and again do it gradually over the coming months don't just throw them all on right now because people will see all the dates. Now, um, best way to get a recommendation is to give one 
but you can ask for a recommendation. So if I click there a minute, it's going to say to me, who do you want to ask? So I'm going to say Lauren Spencer. OK, select the relationship. Um, uh, position at the time, creative director. Next. Hi, Lauren. Could you write a recommendation for me? I wanted to show how to do this on a LinkedIn learning lesson. OK, right. Let's get the capitals there. By the way, Lauren Spencer is amazing and um, has been helping me a lot with social media. There you go. OK, and then you send it. I've actually just sent it to her. Now we've got the accomplishments. Look, that's the one I just added. And um, interests, really good to add a few in there. And sometimes it be companies. So, so start following companies that you want to work with or that you're interested in. Yes, I'm a space freak. Join some groups. Look, facilities management group, HOSPA, the caterer, because your groups will get your posts. So if you get recommendations, your groups will get that. Now, what I would say is people are quite nervous what do I have to post every day? No, you don't. Now, I post a lot because it's part of my business. But one of the things you can do is post other people's posts. So repost them or comment on them. And why don't you once a week start to post other people's? And you can see that's who's looked recently. So these are my posts. See all. OK, so this is all activity where I've commented on other people's or I've made my own posts. So that's a really good thing to do is to comment on other people's. And um, start connecting with people that you would like to follow. By the way, if you have more than 500 followers, it actually doesn't tell people um, how many you've got. So just take it slowly and start to build it. And you can find people. So keeping this lesson nice and short, I'm not actually going to go in and do that. But if you just search how to connect with others on LinkedIn, you will see how to do it. It's, it's pretty straightforward, to be honest. I'm just going to go to the home page now. And, um, you know, you can write a post in there. You can save. You can view. And um, a little trick is if people have liked my posts, but they are um, not a connection of mine, I tend to ask them to connect with me. It's a really good way to do it. OK, so that will get you started on LinkedIn. And why don't you connect with me and then as a first off and then if you get it a little bit wrong, I can tell you. OK, so that's how you set up your LinkedIn profile. It's a very quick lesson. I promise you, if you go on LinkedIn, there's lots and lots of resources there to help you. So you saw there how to form your LinkedIn. Now, now what you saw there is how to set up your LinkedIn profile. Don't forget, as I said there, there's lots of places you can go to to get more lessons on that. Now, once you've done that, it's then about researching the companies and the people that you want to network with. Well, firstly, any job applications you see, any companies you want to work for, start looking at their social media. Get to know the business so that when you get called for an interview, you know about the business and you can showcase that. That always impresses people at interview. Google search people that you admire and then see if you can connect with them. Certainly like their posts, follow them and comment. And also look at industry associations and whether you can join any of those in order to then network with others, albeit virtually at the moment. And don't forget to look at your connections connections, which you saw that I'd actually done in that LinkedIn video where I said if people like what I've posted it's because there's somebody else's connection and then I will invite them to connect with me. I've already engaged them because they liked what I'd posted. Now follow up old 
contacts and employers as well. Actually, somebody posted today that they did just that and they were actually offered a job. So it's a really good way to do it. The last thing is building um, relationships. Now, the problem is, is if we network without building relationships, it, it doesn't go anywhere. The building relationships is the really important element. So number one, keep your promises. Number two, probably one of the most important is introduce people to each other. That you think that they may be able to help each other. Because they will remember that and they will appreciate it. Positive people draw others to them. So can I recommend you keep your social media positive. Now, you don't have to be all happy clappy and you don't have to put on a false face. But if your social media is flooded with um, how unhappy you are with life at the moment, you are less likely to draw people to follow you and then the opportunities that will come with that. It's OK not to be OK, but find the right um, place that you can go to to share that. And actually, if you go to my Adopt a Positive Mindset, you'll see me talk about that some more. Something else I would also say across networking, no matter where, no matter where you are, don't gossip about other people or badmouth them, whether it's online or whether it's face to face. Because I promise you, when you walk away, they're going to think, are you going to do about that about me next time? So um, another one I like to do when I'm networking is, I saw this and thought of you and it might be an article or a picture because you remembered they talked about it. Always say thank you and follow up 48 hours after connecting with them. And if somebody asks to connect with you on LinkedIn, connect and then message them and say, thank you for connecting with me. If somebody likes my post, I will often go back and say, thank you for liking my post. Because that then starts to build a relationship. I suppose what I'm saying here is don't be a fair weather friend. Be somebody that they also want in their life. Now, what I'm going to suggest you do is you download um, resources. OK, you don't have to print them. They, um, they'll work on, on your tablets and you can just click on all the links and post. I will often go back and say, thank you for liking my post because that then starts to build a relationship. I suppose what I'm saying here is don't be a fair weather friend. Be somebody that they also want in their life. Now, what I'm going to suggest you do is you download um, resources. OK, you don't have to print them. They, um, they'll work on, on your tablets and you can just click on all the links. And then next steps. So be really clear about the impression you want to give. Um, don't forget that profile photo and Google audit yourself regularly. Remember, if it's private, keep it private. And look for opportunities that you can do to network. A really good idea is to endorse other people and recommend other people because funnily enough, they then get asked if uh, you'd like to recommend, they'd like to recommend you. So see how you get on with that. And don't forget to strengthen your connections across those that you admire. One other thing, every job you do, everything you do is the stepping stone to the next thing. Don't underestimate volunteering. It might take you down another path where you never expected and you love it. So all that's left to say to you is good luck and don't forget the other lessons in this series. Bye.